Shmuel, Shmuel and Avi, what a special person. He was literally born from prayer. In other words, Hannah, she prayed for this specific child. Shem sent down this specific soul, not just a soul. How did he come about? He came about and was born and conceived and came into this world through prayer. Not just any prayer, but through just profuse prayer, praying all the time. And that is how he came about. Three daily prayers correspond to the three times a day, the three changes of the day, and to the patriarch's prayers. What about the Nila? Where do we have a source for that? Rabbi Levi said, the concept of praying Nila is based on the following verse. Even if you pray profusely, I will not answer. Your hands are full of blood. From here, we learn that anyone who prays profusely is answered, and Nila was instituted to improve the chances of our prayers being answered. This is in Yeshiyahu 115. Since the prophet declares that the people's excessive prayers would not be answered because of their blood, guilt, it is evident that ordinarily praying profusely is an effective way to ensure of being answered favorably. The Gemara is going to continue. It's going to say, see how lofty Hashem is above his world. Yet when a person enters into a synagogue and stands behind a pillar and prays in a whisper, the Holy One, blessed is he, listens to his prayer. And how do we know this? As it says, Hannah was speaking to her heart, only her lips moved but her voice was not heard, says the Gemara, that the Holy One, blessed is he, listened to her prayers. And so it is with all his creatures, as it says, the prayer of the afflicted man when he swoons and before Hashem, he pours forth his speech. Scripture is proceeding to talk about the result of this prayer, and Hannah, through this prayer, was granted a son who became the renowned prophet Shmuel. Well, the verse that we're quoting here, that it says, a prayer of the afflicted man when he swoons, and before Hashem he pours forth his speech. This is referring to Hillam 102.1 in Pasuk 2 and 3. It continues and it says, Hashem, hear my prayer and let my cry reach you. And it also continues and says, incline your ear to me. The verse is describing the person in prayer as pouring his speech before Hashem and asking Hashem to listen. The Mar is going to continue and it's going to say that it is like a person who speaks into the ear of his friend in a whisper and the friend hears. Now, could I ask you, could you imagine a divinity closer than this? And who is as close to his creatures as a mouth to his ear? So in Yerimayu 23, 24, it's saying he fills the world and he gives life to the entire world. The world cannot be described as his place rather he is the place of the world and it's for this reason that Hashem is known as Ha-Makom. Why is this? Hashem is infinitely distant in some ways but he is infinitely close in other ways. What is this all trying to describe? Well, this is trying to describe going back to the snare, the burning bush, which is when Moshe Rabbeinu asks, what shall I call you? What is your name? And Hashem responds with a conjugation of the verb lichios, which is to be. What he responds is, I will be that I will be. In other words, the expression of the Ein Sof, it is the expression of the infinite, it is the expression of was, that Hashem always was, always is, and always will be. The use and the answer of the term with this conjugation of the verb, lichios, to be, is a statement that Hashem, in this answer, Hashem is responding that I am existence itself, and things have existence, but Hashem is existence. That is the profound idea in Judaism. And that's why we say in old Mavado, which is that it's an expression that there is nothing else. Why is that? Because only Hashem is existence itself. You have the 
the property of existence. You do exist, as do I, but Hashem is existence. And we can't comprehend of a being that is existence itself. And because Hashem fills everything and is existence itself, there is no other room for any other divinity. So it's impossible to have any statement of Godhead, any statement of parts, any statement of sons or duality. Those are all ideas that come from the imagination. Whatever, when you're thinking about an idol, might seem to be real. It's only real in the imagination, but when you really dig into the logic of Judaism, you see it's a false reality, and we always want to stay away from false realities. But the power of this is that if a Jew prays three times a day, and the Jew is very careful to say everything clearly that is in the Shemona Esra, and in the proper time, pray, follow your prayer book, and you pray for health when it's the prayer for health, and you pray for your needs in the part where it's talking about acceptance of prayer, that you can be where it's like you're whispering into the ear of Hashem, so to speak. Just like Hannah was able to pray for a child when she couldn't have a chance of having a child. And all of a sudden, Hashem, listen, you can change your life. You can really change your life because you have the power to pray the Shemona Esrei three times a day and to come and whisper to the ear of Hashem, so to speak, and to talk directly to Hashem about your needs and about your worries and to plead with what you need and to try to manifest things into reality. We have a God that's always continuously creating. God is existence itself. You are merely just a shape in existence, but you can get your needs fulfilled if you have have a closeness to Hashem. The Hebrew word for that is vacus. You always want to have closeness to Hashem, and Hashem does listen to prayer. Now, the more holy you make yourself, the more chance you have of your prayer being answered. By the way, one of the other things that we see from the Tanakh is that if you pray profusely, that you continuously pray, and that's why it's so important to pray three times a day in the Shemona Esrei. If you continuously pray, you are connected Connecting with this idea that's expressed in the Tanakh that profuse prayer has a very high chance to be answered. And you can increase that chance to have it be answered if you clean yourself up from sin and you start to connect to the Torah and the mitzvot. The best way to clean yourself up from sin and the best way to start doing more mitzvahs is to learn Torah. Every Jew has to learn some Torah, even a small amount every day. Whether you're a man or you're a woman, you have to learn some Torah every day. It's going to purify you. You are going to be more holy. And when you're more holy, Hashem is going to respond to you in a different way. And the universe will be rearranged for you in a different way and you can manifest things into your life by doing the Shemona Esrei every day, three times a day, and trying to pray for your needs in the right parts. This is available to every Jew. You have to do it the right way. The first part of the Shemona Esrei, the first of the 18, make sure that you say it very very clearly without any mistakes because this has the same blessing of Hashem that Moshe Rabbeinu uses in the Torah. It's written in the Yershami that if you get the first part right, you have a better chance to get the rest of your prayer answered when you address your needs, your personal needs. And the Yershami also says that if you don't get this right, you don't get this first part right where you're praising Hashem, it's very unlikely that you're going to get your prayers answered. So you want to do it very cleanly without stuttering. You want to have the right attention. You want to have your attention be there. Most of all, you want to direct all of your heart. Like when Hannah was speaking from her heart, you want to direct your heart to Hashem. You want to rearrange the Shemona Esrei so that the Shemona Esrei becomes the highest emotional state that you can reach in your life because you are connecting directly to Hashem. And in fact, that's what we see. We see that Hannah was so emotionally engaged when she was praying for the Shemona Esrei that the Kohen Gadol at the time, Eli, saw her and prayed that her prayers should be answered. You don't know how blessing will come to your life, but you want to be very specific when you pray, and Hannah was very specific. She didn't just pray for a child, she prayed for this child.
She prayed for a child to be formed in her womb that would be a servant of Hashem, and you can do that too. If you're having a hard time having children, be very specific about your prayer. Just say, hey, Hashem, just like you formed a child for Hannah, who would be a servant to Hashem, please let me have the merit to also have a servant to Hashem. And you will see that the chances of your prayers getting answered if you're doing this with all your heart three times a day in the Shemona Esrei, you're going to see that things will change in your life because we have a God who is close to you. And it is exactly what the Tehillim says. It's like a person who speaks into the ear of a friend in a whisper and the friend hears. Have a great day.